Interesting. Actually, a little creepy, too. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? It's by Pedro Federberg. OK. Who's that? He was a, a pretty big deal in the 60s and the 70s. He was a surrealist artist. And surrealism was like, anything goes, just add a hallucinogenic drug. <laughs> It's a very whimsical piece. It is made in 1960s. I'm asking for 18 to $20,000 for it. What I love about this piece is that I have not seen another identical piece like it, and I find it to be truly unique. This is really intriguing. How much did you want for it? <laughs> I was hoping for 18 to $20,000. OK. Is it signed by him anywhere? It definitely is. It's right here in the back by his neck. All right. Um, I, I know he's still popular. Mm hmm What this thing is worth, I have no idea. It's really weird. I think it'll sell. But let me have someone take a look at it, if you don't mind. Can you hang Absolutely. out for a few minutes? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to go make a phone call. Great. You like it? I think it would look perfect in your house. It might actually. My house is pretty weird. I feel confident that the expert is going to come in and reevaluate the piece uh, because I bought it in confidence that the piece is original. This thing is definitely unique. I think it's one of a kind. But there was damage on this thing. So I called up my friend Brett, and hopefully he knows a lot more about this than I do. Pedro Friedeberg, all right. He was a pretty eccentric man. And this is very much indicative of his work. He did a lot of kind of semi-functional art. You know, he did the, uh, the chair that was in the you know, shape of a hand where he actually sat he, on he the pump. He made the hand chair? He was the, he was the hand chair guy. Oh. I know he sold thousands of those. OK. 1950s, everybody was trying to paint with meaning. And then he came along, and he created these works that were kind of the opposite of that, that uh, were almost kind of deco in their feel. I think he, he used to call it uh, anti-art for art's sake. And uh, it, it really caught on. Now, Rick, I imagine you've got some concerns. Yeah. These cards are all faded out, so I think this was by a window. We have chips on it. We have wax everywhere. And I don't know if it's one of those art things that you should have put the candles in or just had candles sitting in it without being lit. What would something like this be worth with the damage? You know, I, I don't think the damage is going to impact an artist like Frieda Berg. It, it wasn't about being pristine uh, when he composed his work. It was, it was kind of just the overall aesthetic. That being said, from a value standpoint, a piece like this, I think, with the condition and, and everything, uh, it would probably be in the neighborhood of $20,000, somewhere in there. It's a neat piece. All right, well, thanks, man. Hey, I appreciate Rick, it. It was a pleasure. I think this is a work that would do well in the shop. This is an artist whose works have sold at Sotheby's and Christie's. And to have a one-of-a-kind work like this, not one that was mass-produced or done in the thousands, is quite rare. So what would you realistically take for it? I was hoping to get 18000 for it. That's not going to happen. I would give you eight grand. We can meet halfway. Um, how about fifteen? No. There's no money in it for me, that. Literally, what is your best price? The lowest I can go is 12, and that's the best. It is a beautiful piece. It is it, very it, unique. Unique, I'll give you. Beautiful, I don't know. <laughs> I'll go 11. In my head, anything beyond that makes zero business sense. I can't. If you change your mind. All right. All right, have a good one, man. Thank you. I feel a little disappointed that we were not able to make a deal today. I had my heart set on selling it.